There's an old saying, forgive and forget. It's not a saying which I particularly like or one with which I agree. We should certainly try to forgive, but never to forget. Forgive and remember strikes me as a better maxim. And remembering is what draws us together again on this day, the 15th of February, to recall the martyrdom of the 21 men, the 21 saints who were brutally beheaded by Islamic State on February the 15th, 2015. Forgiving and remembering is very different from jihadist calls for revenge and the promotion of an ideology which is based on hatred, hatred of difference. For decades, I've been involved in the public life of the great city of Liverpool, which describes itself as the whole world in one city. It was the birthplace of one of the world's most famous group of popular musicians and one of whose most popular songs is entitled All You Need Is Love. Those words are the antidote to the hatred represented by those who would disguise their identity in black masks and then on a beach in Libya in murderous cold blood execute a group of men working overseas to support their loved ones in Egypt. It's the antidote too to the bomber who tried in Liverpool in November last on Remembrance Day to commit another atrocity in the name of a twisted ideology based on a distorted view of religion with no regard to the injunction against shedding the life of innocent people but based instead on hatred rather than love. It isn't lost on me that here in the West yesterday was the day on which we remember the patron saint of lovers, Saint Valentine. But recall that he too was also a Christian martyr, murdered during the persecution of Christians by the Emperor Claudius II in about the year 270 AD. Down the centuries, the blood of the martyrs cries out, and be clear, forgiveness does not imply that those responsible should not be held to account. The Liverpool poet and philanthropist, also a parliamentarian, William Roscoe, writing about those responsible for the slave trade, reminded his readers in these words, forget not, higher still than thee, sits the great judge of nations, who can weigh the wrong and can repay, who fixed the bounds of wrong and right, but gave to all their equal blessings, and secures its ends by penalties severe, which often flow, but always certain, on the guilty head. And there's much guilt and many wrongs to be accounted for. During visits to Egypt and more recently to Iraq in the cradle of civilization and the cradle of Christianity, I've met members of the ancient churches whose own deep faith and gentle love and extraordinary dignity stand as a rebuke to those who persecute, defile, abduct, rape, and even murder them. Elsewhere, I've seen how Muslims such as Uyghurs and Rohingya and people of all faiths and indeed of no faith can be on the receiving end of other hateful ideologies such as that of the Chinese Communist Party that replaces another old saying, live and let live, with its emphasis on peaceful, respectful coexistence with kill and go on killing. Whenever I think of what happened in 2015 on that bloodied beach in Libya, I can't also help thinking of Matthew Ariaga, the young West African, probably from Ghana. Matthew's decision to stay with his brothers is an extraordinary expression of common humanity and an example of solidarity, sacrifice and love. Of the 21 who were murdered in Libya, Matthew was the one man who was not an Egyptian, not a Copt. When the jihadists told him he would be freed if he rejected Jesus Christ, he responded by saying that their God is my God. In September 2020, Matthew's mortal remains were taken to Egypt so that he could be buried alongside those other remarkable men in the Church of the Martyrs of Faith built at Alao. Matthew, in this extraordinary act of love and solidarity, was willing to give his liberty and his life rather than walk away from his Coptic brothers. It stands as a rebuke to all of us who remain silent in the face of persecution of 250 million Christians worldwide, Matthew's act of extraordinary solidarity shames so many of us when we consider our tepid response, often based on political expediency, institutional considerations, trade or business, 
the indifference we show to persecution experienced by religious and ethnic minorities the world over, discrimination that morphs into persecution, then persecution which morphs into crimes against humanity, and then ultimately into the crime above all crimes, genocide. The word genocide is the amalgam of Greek and Latin. The Greek genos refers to those who we are, while the Latin word keido means to cut or to kill. By contrast, the word solidarity binds us as one and is a call to stand together in common humanity. It's about hard-headed love in the face of common threats and common enemies, heroic bravery in the face of evil, demands a better response from us, even if it's only a pale imitation of the remarkable act of solidarity by Matthew Ariaga and that deadly beach back in 2015. When Matthew stood with his Coptic brothers, he did so in an uncommon, atypical display of common humanity. The question for us today is, are we willing to do the same?